Joe Pat 87 sends in 499 says Iger's energy in the leaked videos. This town means as much to me as the festering bowl of dog snot. Yeah. Well, Joe Pat, on that note, that video and some other things are probably going to get Bob in some hot water. And somebody who may have a thing or two to say about that is one of our greatest legal minds of our time. Uh, Andrew, Ma- <laughs> Andrew, uh, oh. Esquire. Andrew Esquire. Yeah. Yes, yeah. But Esquire, what are you? Esquire, You're yes, like, uh, yes, yes. Are you Kim Jong Andrew Un? Or I'm Kim you... Jong Andrew Un right now. This is Kim Jong Andrew <laughs> because before before I go to bed, I uh, yeah, am no about as demanding as Kim Jong Un. <laughs> but yeah. no, it's good to hang out with you guys um, here today. Um, uh, you know, and uh, talk about this diversity lawsuit, which yeah. yeah, I think every I was so happy to see that I was right once again. I mean, I'm just I'm just getting so many W's this week. I'm, I'm tickled. Uh, I'm absolutely uh, loving it because I, I said on the seventh, on February seventh, I tweeted it out, and I think I said it on your show and Pro Show and other folks. The second I saw that rubric and a quota, right. I said that's that's evidence. That's direct evidence. You cannot have a racial quota. Period. Right. I mean, that's just hands down not permissible. You know and what's when really you awesome? Uh, so what's I didn't awesome? Drop, but, but basically, you, you said that on our stream. And uh, yesterday, the day that this lawsuit was made public, I published no less than four uh, stream clips of you from the last <laughs> week and a half at Midnight Sedge, <laughs> uh, including one where you predicted just this, and then just mm-hmm. hours later, boom there's the lawsuit so how's that for predictive powers uh, thank thank you thank you andre i appreciate that that's why i love coming on your channels because it's like you know i can do i can say it on my channel but it helps to come on you know i've gone to everybody's channel and i have people that that can say you know definitively no andrew actually said this and this came through like pretty much right away because it's a layup i mean whenever you see something that's such a layup you know that somebody's going to dunk that. And, you know, I'm not surprised that yeah. Miller and the American First Law Firm, they're, they're very much proactive on these types of cases. Uh, I'm not surprised that they were, they're were they taking the mantle here. Now, of course, this has to clear the um, EEOC. So, you know, you have to kind of exhaust your administrative remedies first before bringing a claim. So they've got to uh, send this to the EEOC. So what I read on my channel, and I've got a clip of that out, if you want me to see me reviewing the complaint to the EEOC, the letter, right? That's the first step of a lawsuit. So this is just the beginning of what will be a long battle for Disney. Are they doing it on behalf of an individual? Um, in, in, in this particular case, they have to at least have one individual, right. But they could certify a class here potentially. Okay. I mean, you've got, I mean, a lot of the folks, for instance, that have been, uh, talking to, uh, Alan Ng and, and, and Chris Gore over at film threat. Those are, there's a lot of individuals there. I'm sure that lost jobs or such that could probably be a part of this. Like I see this being big. Like this is a big step towards, you know, how big this is, you know, how big this is. And this is the thing that the lawsuit really hits home. And you have to understand, I said it and I'll say it again. This isn't just who is hired. My guys, this is who is promoted. This is what training was received. This is about the grant programs that Disney has. They have an underrepresented group grant program that gives out, you know, 25 K for underrepresented groups. This goes so deep. And so far, and can hit so many levels, there could be hun- there could literally be hundreds that fall into this class easily. It's not it's not difficult to imagine that. This so is does, something that can actually go Does some of this also derive from the uh, Supreme Court knocking down affirmative action? I think that sure bolsters play into it. Yeah, that bolsters the argument. It certainly bolsters the ar- argument, Paul. But um, it's not necessary for this because this is such clear evidence of this isn't a this isn't even affirmative action this is beyond it. this is a race quota there are decades and decades of clear case law that says you cannot have race quotas i mean that's just something i mean imagine let me put it this way imagine we're in a world where it's flipped around would that be okay well we are in a world that's flipped around well, yeah, well, no, you're I not know. wrong. That's but exactly yeah. what it's we're in. Under, I mean, if you pull up that the 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 rubric, right, and you replaced underrepresented groups with white people, would that be okay? Right. That that's 
Yeah. And the irony here it's the same. Is that the, the, the analysis is the same. The groups right. are yeah. not underrepresented. No, that's the they joke. Are overrepresented yeah. as it Absolutely. is right now. And what these quotas, especially the ones with Disney, do, they make groups that are already overrepresented ridiculously overrepresented. The only ones who are underrepresented are, are white males. They are yes. truly underrepresented, well, and they are being kept to be even more underrepresented. I'll go one that. step further, and they're even being weeded out, right? Like we going yes. to our report we dropped this morning. Like that's what I was referring to with the film threat thing, uh, mm -hmm. as Andre so eloquently, you know, put it in 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 the in the, in the video from the article itself. So we got to give credit where credit's due. That basically you had this whole group of DEI people coming in who had little to no animation experience, but yet we're getting tons and tons of training on how to basically oust their older white counterparts and then yes. take their jobs. Yes. I mean, that's, that's insane. Like you just said, flip that around to anybody else. If you were doing that to women, if you're doing that to black people, if you're doing that to Asian, like it would just blow up. It's clearly not okay, right? Like it's clearly not okay. I mean, if it was in any other circumstance, you, you would you would be like, wait, what? Wait, what? What's going on here? Um, if they were portraying the statistics how they portrayed them, um, any other way, it would be clear to everybody it's not okay. It's just because we have been so beaten down to accept anti-white racism as okay. We have been so bullied into thinking it's okay that no one dared to speak up. But finally, when they went over the over the edge with this, now they're being held accountable when this went public. And mind you guys, this is something that, look, as corporate counsel, I can tell you this. People were trying to do this without saying it, okay? I mean, they were doing it without putting it in writing. Where Disney well, messed up is they put it in right. No, no, they were, they were, they were. Tom, they've been. Yeah, doing I was just going to say because you've got that whole thing, with the DEI thing. Sorry, that's what yes. I was going to refer to. Yeah, where they're no. trying to basically make excuses for this shit. Uh, I'll give, I'll give a good example. Right, I worked at a Fortune 500 company. My boss was a uh, female. The entire, uh, the entire time she worked, she thought I was a liberal. First of all, right, and she, uh, because I never mentioned my political affiliation, she just assumed, and. She came out and straight up told me, she's like, yeah, I'm trying not to hire too many like, you know, country Trump supporter types at the corporation. So I'm really trying to, I'm really trying to figure out, you know, when I interview people who's, who, who they are, you know, what their affiliations are. And I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was out of there within a year, by the way, uh, before they rolled out the pronouns. But what I'm saying is, is these things, people do these things. People go those directions, right? So it's it's just they they know, especially lawyers know, not to put this in writing. What is shocking to me is that Disney put this in writing, put these standards in writing, and put a quota in writing. To me, that is just I don't know the sheer is either sheer hubris or they just had a bunch of yes men that were working for them that you know greenlit this. But this is one of the clearest open and shut cases I have seen regarding um, you know racial discrimination. Well, what I was I, getting at was basically that it's like you just said they put it in writing. It's like they already knew what they were doing was wrong. And that was like that that thing that we went through with the questionnaire or whatever, where it's like, well, is this racist that we're doing this shit? And it's like, well, clearly the answer is yes. But then their answer is no, because da, 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 da. And it's like, wait a minute here. That's some gaslighting on a whole nother level. And <laughs> to me, that tells me they knew exactly what they were doing. Right. Oh yeah. They were yeah, they trying to come know. up with excuses for it. And Andre, you were about to say something. Sorry. Yeah. No. I was. Uh, I was uh, basically going to bring up exactly the same thing that uh, you did, did uh, Tom. Only I was going to frame it slightly, slightly differently, but the same basic thing, because this is the same thing that we spoke about last week. Because for for Disney, it wasn't just this one document that says these are our standards and these are our goals for 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 this category and this category and this category as tom was alluding to they also had this frequently asked questions which is basically mm -hmm. how to interpret the other main document where and this is where all the legal lease was this is where mm -hmm. they basically put in writings that they have plausible deniability that no we do not discriminate and we this does not mean that you are supposed to hire someone 
uh, that doesn't have merit to be hired. And then it says further up on the very same page in slightly different words that yes, that's exactly what you're supposed to do, and we do quote do quote us and everything. So you only have like the the legal disclaimers that had to be there, surrounded by writing, which basically says that these legal disclaimers mean nothing because mm -hmm. this standard is what actually means something. But still, mm -hmm. you have the sentence there that gives that that legal protection. How is that going to hold? This up? is not. This yeah. is not. And well, it, it Andre, it's not. It's the facade of legal protection, right? Exactly. That's what I mean. It, it's not real legal protection. You can't. You can't do this. Okay. <laughs> Let me give a great example. You can't say, don't murder anybody, but also, hey, I murdered somebody, right? Like you can't do both things, right? You have to say, okay, uh, like, don't be racist. Like, we're not going to be racist, but also be racist. You, ha you have to say, okay, no, we are not going to at all use race to not even influence, not even as a factor, right? In the hiring process, the, the promotion process, the training process, just giving this statement that anyone involved in hiring is prohibited from asking candidates about talent. That's not okay. And they actually undermine that by saying context is key when evaluating if a group is underrepresented. What In they're quotes. trying to say is what they're trying to say is profile people, but don't, but don't ask them specifically if about their race, religion, color, sex, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, veteran status, age, disability, or legally protected category. They're saying, well, you know, uh, just don't ask them about it. That's not the law. The law is you cannot use this as a factor for training opportunities, right? For, for, for giving benefits, for having extra uh, internships, apprenticeships. They put pretty much the, the cornucopia of things you cannot do in this it's and, it's, and I, I thought it was funny that they added military and veterans because i would imagine right. that would be the last group this group of left-wing individuals would <laughs> actually ever want to entertain chad what they did is they copy pasted a list of the actual the, of the and, of the quote-unquote protected group well this that's, that's and and, and this well hold on one second amazon's uh document similar to this actually reads worse well, that's that's you know worse on Amazon, right? I mean, but They're it probably next it, in line. Yeah, it doesn't make it better, right? Yeah, no, exactly. no, no. I mean, Amazon, I, I'm, yeah. I'm not saying that. Uh, and and to me, from a human perspective, I I don't think there's anyone who would disagree that Hollywood is an old boys, and I'm using boys in a euphemistic sure. way, uh, place. And uh, you would hire you hire the people that you like working with, and and generally mm -hmm. speaking there was a you know uh, yeah you know the the white guys would get to know the white guys at university or film school and then just keep using the same people and and you know they'd find some kind of european dop that they wanted to work with all the time and stuff like that so uh, th there's no question that hollywood need a little bit of a shake that said hey look um you know look maybe a, a little farther afield for for other people uh don't be so hidebound and and uh and perhaps that's really all. Uh, maybe I'm being utopian. That that was all that I... was needed. This this stuff here, this entrenched, uh, you know, legalized form of a, qu a quota system. I mean, is is illegal. And yes. the the upshot of it is that I've never heard more racist uh, talk. Uh, now than ever before. Well, that's just it's, it. It's wild. It's wild. Well, I was, what I was going to say real this quick is, is causing oh, more racism. Everything that we have fought for in the last 50 years, this is going against and resetting, basically. The only difference is now is that the only people who are being left out are white men, right? And I, mm -hmm. I disagree just a little bit that Hollywood has always been a men's boys club and eh, to a point but it's been a lot of women involved as well throughout the years too it's it's been a little bit more open well, especially so one, thing, one thing we have to one thing we do have to anything. acknowledge is like yeah. who are the qualified who are the qualified people this is like something that i think is an issue the difference is is that women analysis. come in and they expect to be an actress or a producer or something like that they don't want to do the grunt work just like every other job that's the thing that being said it I see what you're highlighting here, and that goes right to the whole sex discrimination well, part of it. But yeah, yeah, and let me just note this, this is like a two second one. I'll use it from the legal profession, right? So back in the day, they used to say law was a boys' club, right? That was the old saying. Everyone said, "Oh, lawyers, old boys' club," right? There weren't 
female lawyers. They just pe- pe- women right. do not go to law school, right? So you can't hire somebody right. when there's nobody available because you don't have a pool to work from. Right. Exactly. Right. There's no pool. But now actually females outnumber men in law school wildly now. So the profession is completely flipped. Now it's majority female. Right. And that whole old boys club thing went away, but the pool is completely changed. Right. So we have to always look at that. And a lot of times people will spout off about sexism or whatever, but they're not even they're completely ignoring the pool. For example, with engineers. Right. I, I, I get along right. very well with engineers. I've dated a lot of engineers, female engineers and I, I'm condolences. You no, know, they're, they're, I actually get along well with them. But um, they 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 always say, oh, no, engineering is totally sexist. Well, no. Now, how many men are graduating from engineering programs? Oh, 80 to 90 percent. Well, that's the pool, right? They can only hire 10 percent. They can't hire anymore. So what Disney is doing is basically creating a dam here is what they're doing. Yes. Just like, yes. yes. They're, they're creating an artificial, like an artificial construct, right? Um, so anyways, what I highlighted here is the, the law. This is not my opinion. This is the law. An unlawful employment practice is established when the evidence demonstrates that the race, color, religion, sex, or national origin is a motivating factor for any employment practice. Okay. So let's just be clear about that. That's the law. It doesn't say except white people. It doesn't say except for Jews, except for Christians. Cause by the way, they're alleging that this discriminates against white males, heterosexuals, as well as uh, Christians and uh, people who are of a Jewish faith. Right. So they uh, add that in there as well. So it doesn't say that there's exceptions to that there are no exceptions to that at all. And right. Disney, Disney. And so this is the law. Right. And this is the conclusion that naturally follows. Disney admits and affirms that it knowingly and intentionally uses race, color, sex and national origin as a motivating factor in its employment practices. The, 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 the rubric is straight up. It doesn't, doesn't hide it at all. It's open. That's why this one is very much open and shut. It's even said that like it is down in here to shareholders, investors in the sec and ladies and gentlemen, this is where I bring up our good friend, Nelson Peltz, because if he does not get a seat on that board, this man and any other shareholder, really major shareholder has a major, major ability to come back here and come at the uh, Disney corporation for using these tactics, which have now damaged the company and are leading to lawsuits. Iger has knowingly engaged in these programs, knowing they are a liability for the corporation. That is a dereliction of his duty as, you know, duty to shareholders, duty to the board, right? Um, To protect the corporation, knowingly engaging in illegal activity and facilitating this seemingly for a while, right? And uh, let's see, facilitating uh, the limiting, segregating, or classifying of employees uh, for employment or new business in ways that would tend to deprive white, male, or heterosexual employments of employment, training, promotions because of their race, color, sex, or national origin. It's it's very, very, very um, open and shut, the law in this case. So this is why this one to me was so clear when I first saw it. It kind of jumped out to me. Um, and why it's going to be a big problem here. Now they have to go through the EEOC before they file their lawsuit. So this is actually the, the quote unquote complaint is actually just the letter from the lawsuit to the director of the EEOC. So they are going to have to, um, going to have to approve of this going to court, which they, which they will, they always will. The one thing I I, want to add just from a cultural perspective is again, my experience is back in the nineties. I would say there was some unconscious racism. I mean, sure. uh, But, uh, uh, you know, if you were competent, you got hired and and it was a convivial, uh, very family oriented process. Uh, And I saw when I was there, a certain studio um, hiring individuals that were openly hostile to other groups, not ignorant or unawares of, which I think was the problem at the time. And all we needed was more awareness. We now have places like Disney now who are openly hostile. And I don't know how you can work in that environment. 
you can't you you really can't well, i and think look, it finally came to a head exactly yeah i'll i'll say this look and and I, we won't like it i don't like it i don't advocate for it but if all they were doing was like unconscious bias um trainings right so paul you talked about like unconscious bias look and, and maybe that was an issue at some point and if they just wanted to do unconscious bias trainings look i think that's that topic is sometimes taken over by the woke i think it's sometimes abused but technically they're a private corporation they can do that they can give their employees unconscious bias training that's totally permissible right they want to give them uh you know uh, seminars or whatever lectures on eliminating unconscious bias that's fine that's totally fine this is not that right this is this is oh no 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 quote this is an, a quota system. an employment right this is hiring training firing employing this is not something that's just involving you know a training right you can make people go to as many annoying trainings as you want they're wasting you're wasting their time as an employee but you can do that if you want to right that's that's your prerogative as an employer but to do well, this and mess with their pay mess with their promotions that is where the line is crossed and that's where i, I was to, referring oh go ahead Andrew. yeah i was going to say i have a question about that because uh lines obviously have been have been crossed here what I'm curious about is who's on the hook for this? Because, yeah, there's mm. a lawsuit, but who is responsible and uh, what kind of uh, trouble are they in? Is this like a purely corporate affair where no individual is responsible? It all goes away if some checks are handed over, then they can carry on as before. Or is this something where they're going to go after certain individuals who are responsible for this? What's the what's the legal consequence of this? Yeah, that's actually a really good question because I, I mean, obviously, with different firms, different clients, they could have different objectives. The objective for most people is typically just to recover, right? So, to be completely honest, this could end up with checks being handed over. I mean, and once again, I'm I'm pretty straightforward right. with my conclusions and my realistic conclusions as to what's going to well, happen, right? On the so, other end of this, couldn't Disney turn around and say, "Well, we were just following along with this." rhetoric and then point to some you know well the, race the group big, or whatever and then try to pass the buck that way or how would that something like that work they're not going to get out of it that way they can't get out i of didn't think so but i just wanted they to can't ask get out but, of a race quota now the, the bigger issue so. is the bigger issue is tom they're gonna have to stop it see the, yeah. the check is one thing but the the pr black eye of having to take down this dei program Oh my god. That's gosh. a bigger thing for them. Well, that's the bigger loss. Is they have to and it's the ABC, the Disney and the other the the precedent because remember Disney sets precedent. Disney sets industry standards. This is literally their inclusion standard. It wipes this out of the entire industry if they lose this. That's the bigger thing. That's the the bigger thing that could stop here is knowing this is impermissible and just wiping it off the floor. I think that's the the best part about this case. Not even the money is one thing, but I mean the the precedent is another. Well, and it's like you know you, you were saying earlier, the whole uh, the the smoking gun here is not just the quota that was in you know that posted by Elon and that came out a couple of years back from ABC. It's to me the smoking gun is that that questionnaire we went over. That to me was the bigger smoking gun. But uh, finishing all this up here because yeah, my point was is that you know um, is it illegal to kill somebody? No, but if you do it this way, it's okay because we're not doing it. We're doing it in the name of diversity. That's basically the way that whole thing came off. Yes, yes, and that's, that's, that's that's what they're saying. That's literally what they're saying. It's okay, we're breaking the crime because we're doing it in the name of diversity. No, it's still a crime, right? It's when it's this wasn't a crime. This is a civil. We're dismantling. Uh, civil we're dismantling the patriarchy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's all against white, white men. It's the white. It's basically people. stereo instructions on how to discriminate against white people. On on behalf of all old white men, I'd just like to apologize for everything Th thank you Paul. well it's you your fault Paul. then because yeah, whenever you apologize that's admitting guilt and saying you can yes. do it for me now my punishment begins i am this genuflecting before you he may now, he may be a man to sell your house struggle all your possessions and give it to a person of color that's that's <laughs> then the you live office. on the street for the rest of your life that's i'm buying them tickets to wakanda <laughs> yes one way tickets to wakanda would be great uh <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so what do you think the chances andrew like i guess uh 
we got a couple super chats that have questions sure. for you on this matter. We'll get to too, but uh, I mean, I got to ask the question that everybody asks when it comes to these, uh, and that is, yeah, what what chances do you think you that this case has right now? I, I mean, it, it's gonna it, like, and this is the thing: what is victory, right? That's always what is victory, right? It, is it is this going to give a massive PR black eye to Disney? Absolutely. Is it uh, is it going to pass a motion to dismiss? Yes. Right. This is it, this is clear on the face. Are they probably going to settle it out? Sure. Is that a victory? Is is PR is a PR black eye setting a precedent and getting a settlement which brings justice in the eyes of these clients to them a victory? I think it is. Right. I think it is. Right. I mean, not every case is going to be out there and it's going to financially ruin the Walt Disney company. We're not going to get that, but this is a death by a thousand cuts. This is a Disney messing up again and again and again. And also this is at a time when I, when Bob Iger can't afford this level of scrutiny, right? They're going to have scrutiny into their DEI programs, scrutiny into uh, what was going on regarding Gina Carano. They're going to have scrutiny into what was going on with Reedy Creek. There's so much going on here that's probing into their corporation that, I mean, it's just, the, the risks and the liabilities for Disney are massive. And we know that behind or rather under the rat's tail, it's kind of dirty. We know that we know the more we're going to get into this, there's going to be more dirt. There's going to be more problems we discover because we haven't even seen under the hood yet. We haven't even taken a look. So I think this has a very good chance of getting to a point where we get very, very interesting information about their DEI program. I would love to see the discovery on their DEI program and the conversation that led to forming this and who was involved in this. Oh man, that would be fantastic. And I do think we'll get some of that. Yeah. Very brief question yeah. before the super chats. Sure. Disney sure. aren't the only ones. Amazon are doing this as well. So is yes. Netflix, but Amazon are the big ones where we have seen the documents. I mean, we covered them two years ago and they're even worse now. Uh, why should the, all the others be off the hook? I know that the, the organization behind this is going, the AFL, America First Legal, mm -hmm. is going first and foremost right. after Disney, which I don't think is a coincidence, but shouldn't someone be going after Amazon and the others doing exactly the same thing as well? I, I think it's only a matter of time. I mean, I think it's it's only a matter of time before that happens. Uh, I think the Amazon, Am the heat for Amazon is coming. Uh, Amazon just hasn't been as much in the spotlight. Amazon, for better or for worse, whatever it is, they've they've managed to dodge the spotlight, you know. So uh, I think that Amazon could very much be subject to it. They they might have less uh, less folks in the class. They might have less folks that have spoken out about it. it might be a newer policy. Disney's done it for longer, right? So you have to find people that I have, have been theory. damaged by this, right? So that's that's another thing about this. I think part of the problem is because like you guys said, the Amazon one is worse, right? Well, mm -hmm. and this is, I guess, a question for you, Andrew, in theory, wouldn't it be smarter to go after the smaller, harder case first and then see if that wins? Cause if then that wins the, the slam dunk, then would be Amazon after that. I would think. Is there no, yeah, I'm not, cause they're, I'm a big, not a they're a bigger fish to fry at the end of the day. And I would think it'd be an easier case to deal with. If you already have Disney under your belt as a, uh, precedent set it's po it's possible like is it possible yeah but i don't know um well, th this is not going to go away simply you're oh, going no. to get every single person no. with pronouns in their twitter bio are going to explode now and what you're going to get is every single crt race grifter out there like the kendys are going to play this up this is going to become huge this is going they're going to uh, frame this as white supremacists trying to take back the south that that's what this is going to how this is going to be framed i wish you were joking but i'm yeah, not I know, I know you're dead serious yeah I know i'm dead, you're dead serious. serious and here i, I usually joke but no no i i can see because in you know one of the things as a canadian that i observe with the united states bless your hearts is that you no one ever goes halfway on anything. It is just pedal to the metal on every side. It's like one of the most fascinating things I observe about you, you Yanks is just, it's, it's, everything gets monster truck, no matter which side you're on. And I'm just waiting now for the backlash from the critical race theory grifters on this. It's going to be huge. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, super chats. Yes, we had a couple specifically about this. Uh, Andrew says, "Can you imagine?" Or actually, Com says for Andrew for ten dollars, "Can you imagine, Andrew, what Gen Z Mafia would look like? They wouldn't keep ledgers, but they would have online PDF documents on how to hide money." The wink and a nod art of unsaid is dead. Yeah, I mean, well, 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 let's be real. I mean, let's be honest. This stuff used to go down in the gentleman's club and be unsaid and whatever. You know, they were the dark smoky rooms. Those did exist, right? You know, but now, and people knew, you know, always in cash, never in writing. But the, the new generation is just absolutely in, in competent and incapable and everything will be documented right they're gonna have everything online it's all gonna be online the the world of analog is completely gone right so yeah the gen z is not gonna be able to hide their anything they're gonna have you know evidence in snapchats they're gonna have evidence on, on tiktok wherever else right whatever new platform comes out you know we're gonna have you know discovery into that that's one of the biggest worlds that's changed in the legal uh in the legal realm um, is that, you know, we're having more and more electronic evidence. So Gen Z is going to have so much electronic evidence. It's going right. to be nuts. It's going to be absolutely nuts. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. See, at least that's, that's one thing point. we were always taught. If you're going to do something bad, don't get caught. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we, we're the last generation who knows how to cover our tracks. Pretty I mean, much. We may have gotten sloppy. This clip was taken from Midnight's Edge in the morning, which streams live every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 9am Pacific Time on the Midnight's Edge main channel. There you can send in your live questions and comments before clips and full stream replays are uploaded to Midnight's Edge live archives. We are also on Twitter, Rumble, Odyssey and Facebook, so smash that like, help share, subscribe and join us.